Welcome back. In the last part, we connected one of the cameras that had never been powered up in my possession with the MVR, and we found that it already knew what the SSID of the MVR was. So they'd been paired somehow prior to them coming into my possession. I'd really like to understand how that's happening. Is it some kind of automated process that we can trigger? Um, and one thing you noticed was I was using a Windows VM in the last part, and you, you'd wonder why, why would I use Windows when you've got Ubuntu or, or an operating system that allows us to do lots of things easily? Well, there is a good reason, and that is because what I found was there's a Zossi tool that allows us to interact and upgrade the firmware on these cameras. So it's called the Zossi Search tool. Um, you can see a, a screenshot of it there. It allows us to search for the cameras now, they say connect the camera, the IP camera to the same router as your computer through the Wi-Fi or, or Ethernet cable. So we're going through the Ethernet cable. But notice it doesn't tell you about setting the IP address or anything like that, which indicates to me that it's using some kind of broadcast traffic, maybe something layer two, um, to communicate with the camera. You don't have to be aware of the IP address. It doesn't have to be routable. Click the search once button, blah, 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 find the camera see the software version. You can then download um, firmware images here um, and then upgrade the camera using that. So I thought we'd have a look at this and, and, and see what we can do through this search tool. So I've got Wireshark running as we have before. It's exactly the same session. You can see that, that ARP traffic saying 192.168.138.5. Um, we have Telneted into the device and that session's still live, just run PS. Still not doing anything via Wi-Fi. Um, but we're connected to that camera. We've got a shell with that hard-coded password, hard-coded PSK. Not great in security terms, to be honest. But what I'm now going to do is I'm going to start this search tool. So it looks, looks pretty strange, a little bit small maybe for YouTube, but there's not much I can do about that. And I'm going to hit search once. So you can see instantly it's found the camera. Interesting. Okay, so the IP address 192.168.147.5, that's the Wi-Fi IP address. Whereas the source address 192.168.138.5 is the Ethernet interface that we're actually connected to. We've got the MAC address there, um, the software version 3.2.6.16. So now we can right click on it. We can update, we can do the network config, mainstream. I wonder if we can actually see what's going on on the camera. So if I do mainstream there. And these tools tend to be quite crashy. So let's just close that program, start again. So sometimes these things, yeah, they're not, they're not brilliant. They're not the most responsive things in the world. So, okay, update package path. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go to downloads where I've got these files. So 3.2.6.16 is the one that's on the camera, but 3.2.7.16 is later. So let's go for that one. We'll hit that one, and then I'm going to right click on the camera and go update. Oh, sending packet 0 of 0. Wait, restart. So if we jump through to Wireshark, I've noticed the LED has just gone off on the camera. The camera has just restarted, I think. So we've got some broadcast UDP traffic there. So from us to broadcast, we sent some data. What does that look like? Let's just make that a bit smaller at the top there. So we sent what looks like the MAC address of the camera, what looks like an IP address, some version numbers. 8.8.8.8, .8 Google's DNS, I don't know. And then a few bits of data, QH, not entirely sure what's going on there. The camera then responded, 192.168.5 said some stuff back, all the zeros pretty much, apart from that little chunk at the beginning. So I'm not sure what that is. Let's get rid of this ARC traffic. Um, we know that's there, we don't care. Right click. Applies filter not selected. Ah, so there you go. You've got more UDP traffic. So back when that started, it looks like my 
My Windows VM shouted 51A8, lots of zeros. The camera responded saying some stuff, IP camera, MAC address, some IP addresses. So it's similar to what it, my end sent out. I wonder if that's like, you've got, to, you've got to query the camera to read the camera or something. Let's go and see what this is going on here. Sending packet zero, zero. I'm going to end up with a bricked camera, aren't I? Maybe I should read the instructions. Should I read the instructions? Let's see what the instructions say. Um, so, yep, set the firmware there. Go to update. It will upgrade automatically. Just wait for the progress bar to reach 100% is okay. If you suddenly get stuck during the upgrade process, you can disconnect and reconnect the camera. And power to try again. Hmm. Well, it looks like it's stuck to me. Sending packet zero zero. So let's try power cycling the device. The activity LED is off and the activity activity LED has come back on. So that's good. You can see some traffic on Wireshark. That's coming from my machine at the moment because the camera is not quite ready, but the Ethernet interface has come up. So still mine 138.123. Still mine. And have I bricked a camera? Oh, oh, hold on a second. There we go. Sending 604 packet of 604 packet. So that was that was TCP. Sorry, that was TCP on port 8010 through to the device. So now the camera's come 138.144 hold on let's go and follow that tcp stream oh wow okay now i'm not certain uh hold on let's just change this to a hex dump so we sent a packet zero one lots of zeros and then it literally looks like we sent a raw elf binary that really does look just like an elf binary being sent through to the other end. Hold on, let's scroll down a bit. So this firmware upgrade has happened. The device is now responsive. Um, has it changed its IP address? Let's clear the filter so we can see all the traffic again. Start scrolling. No, it's back to 138.5. Wow, I think this is going to take some serious unravelling to work out what's going on. So let's, um, Telnet died there. Root 123456ASJ. And we're still back in. So the camera has updated. It's taken uh, an image file. I think next time we're going to have to look at that image file. I think it's just an elf binary. That It's just a single binary being transported between one end and the other. I bet it's in fact that IP cam there. Probably should have taken a hash of that beforehand. In fact, because this is GIFs 2, um, we might actually be able to see um, the date change on that. So I'm going to find ipcam.exe because I don't know where that is. So it's in app bin, cd app, whoops, cd app bin, ls-asl ipcam.exe. Okay, no, it doesn't have time. 4.7 megabytes. 4.7 megabytes and uh, hold on a second. How big are these bad boys? What's going on with that? Oh yeah, I think that's literally just transporting that, that individual file and that is that ipcam.exe. So we can look into that next time. Uh, what else have we got in this tool here? So it's complete. That's good. Still got those same IP addresses. We've got this LAN device reset. Um, I don't know what that means. So again, is this listening on broadcast and getting some interesting stuff and possibly resetting? So it's, it's ARPing all of the time. Let's hit that LAN device reset. You will issue a reset command for all devices in the LAN. Please confirm the device in the LAN and the devices you need to reset. I, I've got no idea. 
Let's hit that button. Oh, okay, so we've got some UDP traffic. Let's stop scrolling. So broadcast UDP from me to the rest of the network. Again, that, that it looks like some kind of header describing describing the cameras we want to reset or something. Does what does reset actually mean? Does it mean power cycle or does it mean brick or does it mean factory reset or what? So the activity LED has gone off on the camera. I really don't know what that means. I'll give give it like thirty seconds or so and see if it comes back on. Just from the temperature of the SOC on that, I think it is not doing anything now. It seems to be cooling down. Let's power cycle it. I'm impatient and see what happens. Right, the activity LED has come straight back on. We're 192.168.138.123. And is it still going to be there? So we've got that good way ARP traffic. Just missed that. More windows. Who has 192.168.1.1? Tell 192.168.1.100. So I think we factory reset the camera. So 1.100 isn't our IP address. Or wasn't the IP address. Um, right. Uh, let's change our IP address. Let's change ourselves to 1.123. I just use 123 because like devices don't ever seem to use 123, um, and it just means it's kind of distinctive to see it. Windows automatically um, changes the IP without you having to disconnect the network, which is nice, makes things nice and easy. Um, that won't work anywhere anymore. 1.100 root 1.12345 oh, ASJ. I think I typoed that. One, two, three, four, five, six, ASJ. And we're back in. Okay, change, change in behavior here. So I think we factory reset the device. Host APD is now running. So let's cat slash etc host apd dot conf. That's the same as before. IPC, MAC address of the device, PSK of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now, and I, I'm not gonna be able to show you in that virtual machine, I can see a network on my phone of one, two, three, of the IPC C0, presumably that network. Um, let's go into ETC. Let's see what WPAPSK.conf contains. And it still has that serial number in it. So that factory reset hasn't changed that. We've now got the device running its own um, AP. Let's see what it's listening on. So we've got 554, Telnet, and that 8000 port. Um, let's just actually do UTLP, so that's UDP and TCP. So yeah, you can see on UDP, it's actually listening on quite a few ports. We've got that 18152 and 18154 that we saw the broadcast traffic working on that's kind of reconfiguring the camera. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, decoding that protocol is probably going to be really painful and slow. But now that means the camera is offering a Wi-Fi access point and we can almost without a doubt connect to that with a fixed PSK and turn it into it. So I'm just thinking, well, how could we piece this together into an interesting attack? Is there something we could do with this? We could, we could maybe somehow trigger that factory reset remotely, get the camera to start an access point, connect into that access point and view the camera. I'm not really sure. But I think that's quite interesting. This tool has factory reset it. We've we've upgraded the firmware. I'm not sure what the difference in the firmware is. The firmware appears to just be that ELF file that's being sent. Again, we're just like uncovering lots of pieces of the puzzle. Um, I'm sorry if this one was a bit meandering. I really didn't know where this is going. The previous bits have all been quite formulaic. Like I know, I maybe don't know what's going to happen, but I know what I'm doing. Here, we're in uncharted territory. I think this is starting to get fun. So next time I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to do, but please join me. If you like this, press the notification bell, subscribe, like, and all of those kind of things. Thanks for watching and goodbye.